So, guys, hello, servus, moin moin. Hello, Internet. Please do not use my image in a voice to build AI models and then do silly stuff. So, today I'm going to talk about a problem which is quite well known. And I suggest one of the possible tools to solve it. We will try to figure out together if this tool might be useful for you, or maybe you should use another one, right? Nothing ultimate in this talk. Um, yeah, but first, like, th this is a 20 minutes really short talk, so I have everything on one slide. I will not click around, and that's very nice, right? So, like, I'm Zaur, that's my name for letters, sorry, it's very complex. I work at Genoa, GmbH. This is a company which is near Munich. And we build basically firewalls, VPN solutions, we build labs, laptops, in any case, like secure hardware is what we do. Some of our hardware has certain certs and it can be used in so-called high security domain, right? So you can install it in government and then Angela Merkel is going to be protected with this stuff. Uh, if you've heard of PFSense, you know what it is. So we basically bundle something similar to PFSense but made in Germany. This is one of our main cool products. Yeah, so these slides are online. This slide has also following slides but they're backup. You can like check them out later. Uh, and I'm going to talk about vulnerability management. So there is who is aware about OWASP Top 10 project? Oh, that's very cool. So it's, it's a great project. Please use it. It's amazing. You can read there about 10 most common vulnerabilities you, <coughs> pardon, you see on the web. And for <coughs> quite some years, uh, vulnerability A9 stays in the list, and it's using existing components, libraries, <coughs> uh, I'm sorry, uh, with known vulnerabilities, right? And basically, here, I'm talking about vulnerability management. So the, in this talk, it means managing vulnerabilities in your systems, right? And these systems can be either network of your organization or your corporation. It can be some system your developers build in your company. It can be actually anything which contains software, right? And might have vulnerabilities in this talk. So, um, who, who of you is a developer or works with developers here? Could you just give me your hand? Like, like um, could you tell me, like, what, what do you do to make sure that there are known libraries with existing vulnerabilities there? If you, like, do anything, can, can you tell me what you do, actually, to avoid such situation? So it, it's, it's a hard thing, right? Because you update the library, everything breaks. Who is paying for that, right? For fixing it, nobody, right? But also just simply getting to know what is broken there is hard. So we realized it in, at Genoa as well. And although there are many tools, they were not created in Genoa. So we decided to build our own. And we built a very simple tool. And I'm explaining it now to you. Basically, it's like a website. You log in there and you tell, my system contains off. And you just use names, right? Of OpenBSD, which we use, of Squid, maybe of Microsoft Windows 10. So you basically just name it. You don't need to put any source code into it. You just list the components. And then Bounce Watch will show you the list of relevant vulnerabilities to you, relevant CVs you, you have to look at. So it's actually really nothing more than that. But it's a simple tool. It's, I guess, understandable, usable. And I'm going to show you right now real quick how it's done. So that's, of course, a live demo, right? So it never works. But yeah, so but once watch says hello to me because I'm log in there, logged in there, and it tells, like, create your first project. Basically, the project is a description of your system, right? So let's do it. It tells to do it with the blue color. I name it somehow. I don't know. Let's call it Microsoft's network. Okay, somebody didn't like it. Let's call it BMW network. Um, so and basically, here is the description of it, and you have to just tell what's there on the network of BMW. Let's say there is a Genogate, a product of Genoa, right? Because I guess they use it. Let's say we have the Windows 10. Let's say we use the WordPress. Or just WordPress. We don't know many WordPresses. 
And basically that's it, right? You just comma separate what's on there, it's created, and now you can click view relevance. Now basically you have three pages to look at, right? These are CVEs, which you can just check, you know, and some of them will be, of course, wrong, right? Something will mention Microsoft Windows 10, although, you know, the wrong version or something. So you, you see many of them do not match you. You just select them all, and you say, you know, let's react on them. And you say, it's okay, it's not a problem. I had a look at it, right? And now it's all green. So, so that's a very simple way to eliminate false positives, just with the UI, right? And if you do it often enough, you will have just uh, one screen maybe to go through, and it's that's easy. It's not much worse than having nothing for it, right? And I, I mean, that's basically it, right? That's my presentation. Now I can talk about details if you want me to. I, I, I think, I think, to, sure, with the microphone. microphone. Hello, 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 Zara. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering uh, how deeply uh, Wounds Watch resolves dependencies because, for example, if you put in Ruby, yeah. then it's usually it, it uses the C library, it uses OpenSSL, and then it uses Image Magic. So you have this large network of dependencies. How do you deal with that? So basically, Wounds Watch is a very simple tool. It doesn't go into details finding you even more. If you put Ruby, it will bring you all the CVs which talk about Ruby. That's it. Okay. Right? If you want to have all these details, you, you want to have image magic, you want to have more, you can either put them in, right? If you want your code base to be analyzed, there is a cool tool for NoWasp called Dependency Check. Maybe that's something better for you. But I mean, if you have your network, like BMW's network, right? You can't put it inside some C CD, right? You, you can describe it in Wounswatch, though. And by the way, Wounswatch itself, as we talked about Ruby, it's a very simple Ruby on Rails application, which you can just take from GitHub, it's MIT licensed, and you can just install it on your premises. So it's a good private solution for you. It's secure enough, I mean, as a web application. So, <laughs> and uh, you are part of the OWAS project as uh, uh, mentioned on your CV. Um, so, yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I, I'm not like an OWAS member, but I'm responsible for Ruby on Rails security cheat sheet on on OWAS. So that should be secure as well. Well, <laughs> a, a, as good as web goes, right? Yeah. So. Basically, how how many minutes I have more? I have seven minutes more. Let me show you some more slides, do you, right? Uh, do you have any questions for the moment? Um, Nicole, maybe? And, yeah. Is there a way that I can say, oh, well, I only care about security, uh, security issues except for CVE that is higher than, let's say, 7.5, I don't care about cross-site scripting and everything. I just want code execution and a SQL injection, for example. Yeah, that's a cool feature request. There is no such way right now. <laughs> there is no such way right now, but the database already knows the CVSS vectors for the CVEs, and you could basically add it without large hassle. Okay. So, um, yeah. We have a feature request here. <laughs> um, Thank you for the presentation. Um, my my business case is that I'm as a, uh, as a security manager supporting different teams, and for each of the teams, I want to make sure when they have entered their different software components that they get regular updates. Is this a feature which is already in Wool? Wounswatch, it's called yes. Wounswatch of German. Is it is it already a feature? <coughs> Or is it a feature request? So basically, that was my intent to not to bother developers ever. Like once watch will update itself, there will be a new vulnerability shown, but there is intentionally no feature made to bug developers because they will just filter it into spam and switch it off for forever, right? That's how it works. And there is one cool tool, another one. It's called SAUCAS, socks.com. You can basically type in systems similar to Wounds Watch in there, and 
this one will send you the emails or them, you know, the, the developers. And this one you will block and once what you will use. But by the way, Socks is a great tool. It just works a little bit different. You track the individual products. So you say, I'm interested about Windows 10, and then you get everything about Windows 10. Here you say, I developed these three systems. These are their subsystems, and then you have the list to look at. And uh, one feature would probably be to, to add uh, like this recursion, as you mentioned it. So if I'm using some JSON or JavaScript magic libraries, then there's, we know there's these thousand dependencies when you start a new project. Um, <coughs> yeah, so if you, if you have a purely source code based project, so if your project is not a network, but one program, maybe on NPM or maybe in Rails, then GitHub has already now an integration of the software, I think it's called Gymnasium, so GitHub will just show you the vulnerabilities. So this is also one of the approaches. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how deep they look, but this might be, again, like a little bit better mix for so you. So there is a different focus uh, area, more like source code control for developers and this tool more for um, managing the infrastructure and components you Maybe. Use. You can also put software components in here for your software project. If, for example, tools like GitHub integrated Gymnasium, Gymnasium itself, if they're not clever enough to get your internal dependencies. Yeah, by the way, so th there are many more tools which will find problems in your source code in your systems. This one just searches CVEs for known stuff. So this is kind of how, how, do, how don't I miss the code execution in some very well-known component, right? So it's two, not to miss very bold problems in your infrastructure, network, or software. So th this, this is what it is for. Mm -hmm. Do we have uh, more questions? Uh, there are two. Okay. Yeah, that's approximately how it works. So indeed, you, you could have seen that after I created the project, I could immediately see the list of vulnerabilities. As there are so many vulnerabilities and you have to do a quick full text search, that's what I'm doing right now. Although there are CPEs and product version numbers, I mean, I'm aware of that. That doesn't quite work, unfortunately, right now. There is a CouchDB together with uh, another regular index data database in the background, and it does the search. So that what what makes it really fast, and this is one of. So you could think, okay, let me just do it with Grab myself. I don't need any tool. So this tool will be just much faster than some Grab implement Grab like implementation. And um, two more questions. Okay. <laughs> Right, so what this program does, it, gr it takes an archived set of CVEs of common vulnerabilities and expo exposures for NIST, and that's what it based its search on. But there is nothing really strongly hard-coded, so you could add potentially another source. Like very many, many people are interested in German sources. But I think they're a compilation of CVs, so I just don't include them right now. Hi, um, thanks Hello. for presenting the tool. I think it's always great to have tools to yeah, ease the stuff that you have to do, but it's not that exciting to fix all the vulnerabilities. It's just one remark on Gymnasium. You're correct, that's a cool tool, um, but they were shut down on May 15th because they have been acquired by GitLab. So if you jump into Gymnasium right now, be aware that it's a uh, short, uh, short period of time you can use it. Yeah, so that, that, that's a very good remark. So basically, if you, if you know what is GitLab, it's like GitHub, which you can install on premises. And this includes a very powerful tool called Gymnasium, which will show you the problems in your source if it can find it, them. So just use GitLab, really good tool. Okay. Any more questions? Do, do I have some time still? I have do you have a joke? I think. What do you say? Do you have a joke for us? A joke? 
Well, so let me show the website of my company. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, okay. <laughs> so basically, th this is how German uh, government class security looks like, right? So, for example, th th this this thing, high resistance firewall Geno gate. Uh, this is a very interesting thing, which indeed protects many data centers with stuff you don't want to leak. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Joke. So, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Yeah, a, a small, short kind of applause for Sauer. Thanks. Thank you.